evening, people. Good evening. Woo. February. Tuesday evening. 2015. Minister Dwight Gower. Back again for a short segment. God's Word. Church of Christ. Proudly said. Internet minister. Field minister. And working on being a church minister. How about that? Okay. Tonight, people, we're going to be talking about Christ's teachings of schisms in the church. All those little itty bitty things that eat at you. You know, the closer you get to God, Satan turns it up, don't he? But some kind of way, you got to dig deep, get past that thing. It goes all over, you know. We all go through it, you know. Well, let me just get a little sip of water here. So I can, can roll off my tongue a little easier. Yeah. Okay, let's get down with it now. Okay, schisms, trouble, trifling, separation. Okay, uh, we're going to start out with, first of all, I want to give the definition of a, of a schism. A separation and alienation causing divisions among Christians who ought not be united, who ought be, oh, who ought to be united. A separation and alien nation uh, causing divisions among Christians who ought to be united. All right, we've got to write that down. It said, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 25, that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should all have the same care for one another. People, I've been in church before, and there's ministers that's got their favorite elder. And they, they know if they go to every other elder, well, well, uh, you know, this particular elder goes to the rest of them. They got like, they got a little click with inside the eldership. See, that's just what the Bible talks about. Everybody gets the same treatment. Okay? Just because you go out and baptize more people, and everything, that doesn't make you any special than anybody else. You, that's the thing that the Christians ought to do. That's the thing that the minister ought to do. That's the thing that the deacon ought to do. That's the thing that the elders ought to do. Let's break up that little click within the church. That's what's separating us apart when we're supposed to be united as one. We got to stand strong, a united front against the rest of the world. Denominationalism is beating us, Church of Christ, first century people. Let's stop the doggone mess here and get with it. All right now. Let's get on down here to 1 Corinthians 1.10. Talk about some more divisions. All right now. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There we go now. We're talking about that son that died for us. Warm me up now. now. That ye all may speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. No divisions. You get me now? But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. People, that knocks out denominationalism. Because we are not in the same mind and the same judgment. Over in Matthew, it says, the blind lead the blind. Both should fall in the ditch. Can't everybody be right? It can be one of three ways. Either I'm right and you wrong, or you're right and I'm wrong, or we both wrong. We both can't be right, and we both believe in the same thing, but you got your belief, and I got mine. It don't work that way. Unfortunately for anybody out on, on the outside of the body, the first century church, the church he established with the 12 apostles, and he is, before he ascended back up to heaven, he left this first century church, Christian church, behind. The church of Christ. That's where the salvation is. You're wasting your time in denominationalism. It's going to be too sad at the end of time for you to see these things. The mercy is gone now in the spirit world. You're going to cry. You're going to hit the ground. Your face is going to be bowed down. Every, fa every eye shall see him as he is. Every knee shall bow. In fear and in trembling. Unfortunately, you can't say, Oh, I changed my mind. 
You'll live your doggone life the way you want to. He'll, that's the first thing he'll tell you at the sentencing. You didn't do nothing for me. You ran around there teaching people how to get out of the body, stay out of the first century church. With your Baptist and your Methodist and your Catholic church and your Presbyterian and God knows who else. Jehovah's Witness. The doggone shame. Oh, I believe it. It's just amazing how the perception of the mind works. I look at people, I'm like, what? Sometimes it's just, the, the Bible tells you over in Timothy, just gonna be, they're going to come to you just like old fairy tales. I call it the Cinderella story. Because it certainly ain't true. Yet this right here is true. And that's untrue. This right here is true. And that's untrue. If the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. Oh, all right now. Let's get with it. Now let's move on here. 1 Timothy 5.13 And with them they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also, and busybody, speaking things that which they ought not. You know how they run out to house to house, telling lies. Oh, Sally Sue is over here, and brother man's over here. Sally Sue is going to that church, and brother man say he's right over here. We can get down in a discussion. You know, the Bible speaks against debate. And you know why it's like that? Because we're going to have a big argument. It started out as a discussion, and it's going to migrate up into an argument. Okay? And people can keep their heads. We can get a Methodist and a Baptist, a Catholic and a Presbyterian and a Jehovah's Witness and, a, and the Church of Christ. And I bet you everything can come out the Church of Christ, man. He can, conscience, he can power down every scripture that they try to justify having that church there. Oh, there's something good in every church. But that doesn't mean it's the true church. That church is still on the outside of the body. Unless you're inside of the body, you have the saving grace. You have the benefits of the blood to forgive your sins. You may think it's because you're on outside of the body. You think your sins are forgiven. Not. It's still weighing on you. See how you look up one day, things just that always seem to be right. There's a chasing up on you, especially if you're sitting because God knows your heart. God also knows, hey, you know, you may be, be sent to strong delusion. If he already knows that you ain't going to take it anyway, well, I just leave him on a rapid chase. See there? Hard head. Then you want to change when you step up to the sentence. Too late now when you crawl up her with your tail between your legs, wrapped around your manhood, squeezing, squeezing so tight that you can hit high notes. All right, let's move on here. Second Thessalonians 3.11 For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working out at all, but are busybody. See, uh, people, that busybody thing, Sadisu and Bro Man, they are busybodies running round and round, people knocking on your door, the tower, and handing you all this little false doctrine and different things. Because they like to me, oh, the music over here, the music over here is, is fly. I love it. It's choir over here. You got the piano rolling and the bass thumping. That stuff is a distraction. It's not mentioned in the New Testament Scriptures. Revelation 22, 18, and 19. No air to take away from the Word. Deuteronomy 4, 6. No air to take away from the Word. You're adding to the word, people, if it's not mentioned in the New Testament Scripture. You're not up, up on the old and the new. I'm going to have to do some up-to-date segments that's going to be forthcoming so I can get down a little bit deeper into the, in, with the nitty-gritty. Okay, here. Busybody walking around disorderly, spreading havoc, and all those different things. Now, let's hit First Peter 4.15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief. We all done come close to that murderer thing. You know, we may feel like in about 10 or 15 minutes, I'm getting ready to knock his head off. But we don't really mean it. But you can get yourself caught up. Sometimes it happens and you don't mean it. Now, thievery goes on in any form. Those little things that you steal like food, those little things that you chuck away like a pencil, all that's petty theft. It still counts as thievery. Okay? Now, different sins got different penalties. God judges those things. That's where your chastening come from. Your chastisement. Your Holy Ghost spanking. He going to keep it on top of you until you get to turn around because you made a promise to him. 
All right. Or as the evildoer. There's a lot of evil minds out there. Some just, they're just natural troublemakers. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Ain't that something? People, I was on the job and a little girl is going through a certain uh, 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 sewing discord within the warehouse. She went and told on me because I said, this is supposed to be a spiritual place. Just help out. Don't complain. If you come here to complain, won't you go home? She wouldn't told the bosses on me. And I didn't care. <laughs> I did not care. I've been watching things between blacks and whites uh, uh, go, go down and stuff uh, uh, for a whole year. And kept my mouth shut until I got the facts down. And I got them. Okay? It's not a good thing. There was a meeting call. Now I see them sit there and talk to one particular African American girl. Talk everybody talk crazy to her. And she said they take it. She takes a little bit of it. Ain't no way I will let anybody in that warehouse talk to me like that to talk to that girl with such disrespect. Because I don't have to raise my voice. Like in the, in the likeness of me preaching the word when the spirits got a hold of me. I can sit there and come at you mild tempered, mild tone and even tempered. And tell you exactly what I want to say about you. Now the next move is yours. Be mindful. I am on social media. It's not like I'm going to throw a dart at nobody. I can get on here and just simply tell the truth to alert the community of what's going on. They deserve to know. Nobody wants to be looked at differently because of the color of their skin. Come on, skin, uh, color prejudice. So pathetic is quaint. Okay. These things also work their way up in the church, people. I've been in a church before that's had uh, uh, three different sections. One, one part was racist, the other part was uh, a separationist, and the other part was godly. See, just because this is the first century church, and I hate to say anything because Christ died for that church, I'm a realist. There are good and bad people everywhere. But you ain't got to be a part of that. Do just like I do. I throw that stuff to the wind and throw it out of my mind. I don't even think about it no more. I say what I got to say. As far as I'm concerned, I walk over and leave you standing there. If you're talking a bunch of nonsense. Because that's what I'm going to try not to do. Because yeah, if I stand there talking, the tempers may start to flare. Now you're going to start to think ungodly. In just that 10 or 15 or 20 or 30 seconds, you could do something ungodly that you'll pay for for the rest of your earthly life. If you want to know anything else about this thing, get yourself into the nearest church of Christ so you can get on the winning side, the saving side. And don't bring no schism, no separation, no Sally Sue or broad man. Talk to those elders and those deacons, ministers, and Christian brothers and sisters that can sit down with you and counsel. Study. Study, study, study. Hear, believe, repent, confess, baptism. That gets you through the doorway. Fear number six, you got to live faithfully. When you do those things, you go from sinner to saint. Milk to the meat. And migrate up to that thick fat piece of pine wheel which is heaven's door and it ain't bloody. Come on in you made it home. You don't want to hear depart. A whole lot of them going to say depart. Denominationalism don't walk through the gate. That's on the outside of the body. Now, this is Minister Dwight Gabbard and I'll be back with you again in the next segment. Now you keep it real and don't schism. Amen. All right, man.